Hello once again everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first again the hazardous weather graphic uh, for tonight. They're starting tonight. Uh, actually the western zone here the Galena, that Galena's in that doesn't kick into effect until tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Winter weather advisory for snow and possible freezing rain uh, rolling through the area there tomorrow into tomorrow night. The advisories here to the east in the uh, Fairbanks zone or the greater Fairbanks area or the greater, greater Fairbanks area uh, extending up here into the Yukon Flats and also down to the Alaska Range now. Winter weather advisories uh, for snow, four to eight inches in the Alaska Range. And that's out until about uh, noon tomorrow or so. Looking for anywhere from uh, three to seven inches here through the central Tanana Valley and eastward over toward Eagle, also on the north side of the Alaska Range down toward Northway and Eagle, and of course up toward Fort Yukon. And the weather, weather advisory for snow for the Susitna Valley is uh, still out, or it's still due to expire at 9 p.m. Monday evening, this evening. And uh, again, 6 to uh, 12 inches of snow has fallen, expected, and maybe as much as 18 inches of storm total there over toward the uh, higher terrain before it ends, and that again uh, due to expire at uh, 9 p.m. Monday evening. Moving on to satellite uh, imagery, you can see lots of moisture has flown northward here, now taking a turn to the east and sliding in across uh, much of northwest Canada and uh, into the southeast coast here, snow falling over the uh, Juneau area on up uh, Klondike Highway, Haines, and to Skagway, seeing snow back to the west, snow at Yakutat, and then rain, Cordova, and some mixed rain and snow around Seward area, but improving here for Kodiak Island, and uh, kind of a mixed condition here over south central Alaska, uh, except up the Susitna Valley, you get into the moderate snow there at Talkeetna with those heavier amounts in the Susitna Valley, especially toward the west there. Uh, also going to be a little heavier toward the Talkeetna now that the uh, flow has turned westerly. Back to the west, you can see uh, a lot of breaks in the clouds here over the eastern Bering Sea, right up in the St. Lawrence Island there and toward the Bering Strait, southward to the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, pretty good uh, ridge of high pressure coming in, building eastward here behind this system and ahead of the next uh, active front coming into the western Aleutians there with uh, gale force and narrow band of storm force winds just ahead of the front there. Uh, moisture sliding northward, the whole pattern shifting eastward, and this front will continue eastward and drive right into the uh, southwest coast here uh, tomorrow as the high pressure moves eastward and comes over the uh, central interior during the day tomorrow. Look for things to dry out considerably with uh, less clouds, less snow, probably stopping on the snow and rain showers with uh, some possible clearing as well. Otherwise, uh, up on the Arctic coast, not a lot going on up there. Well, there was some snow, pretty good snow falling over at Kaktovik uh, during the day today. That lightened up toward Barrow, but generally uh, picked back up again with this band of clouds, this week's system here off the northwest coast uh, with the trough, or actually the center right on the northwest coast there near Kivalina. Periods of snow into Kotzebue Sound, into the interior of this trough. Uh, more numerous snow showers right along that trough axis become scattered either side of that. And then this low lifting northeastward here in across uh, south central Alaska and eventually up toward the Alaska Range and bringing the snow to much of the interior areas there, making the flow more westerly. And again, the uh, Alaska Range looks, for, uh, range looks for four to eight inches of snow over the next uh, 12 to 16 hours there with the uh, snow advisors out until noontime tomorrow for the central Tanana Valley. And a little longer back here, we're again, chance of seeing some freezing rain over some of the western zones there around Galena. Uh, otherwise, today, rain along the outer coastline here, Sitka, back up, as I mentioned, to Cordova, and over to about uh, the Seward area with a narrow band of mixed precipitation just north of that and then into the snow. Again, the eastern northern panhandle back across uh, areas of the Copper River Basin. Wasn't a whole lot today in the Copper River Basin except possibly for the uh, Wrangell Mountains. And then some rain and snow showers south central Alaska, again, much heavier up the Susitna Valley there and also over portions of the Kenai Peninsula. And the trough sliding southeastward here brings a little bit more snow shower activity uh, tonight, right up to the Alaska Range here in the eastern Cuscombe Valley. 
Periods of snow beginning to taper off uh, for the McGrath Nikolai area, and the snow continues there across the central and eastern Tanana Valley, and also up here across the north slope. In the Arctic coast, uh, light snow cont will continue to fall, and also with this uh, almost stationary system, the low center actually pulling back to the northwest a little bit as this front drives northeastward into the Bering Sea with a good push of uh, southerly winds and warm air. Once again, freezing levels will be rising, especially behind the warm front here. Uh, mixed rain and snow changes to rain, probably from the Perbolofs later tonight when as soon as it gets that far east down into the central Aleutians with again uh, 30 to 50 knot winds associated with that. Colder air coming back in behind that, so rain and snow showers over the western Aleutians. Otherwise, a break here for the Alaska Peninsula in toward Bristol Bay. Also along uh, the North Gulf Coast here, kind of offshore flow with this ridge building into the southwest interior. Pretty gusty winds, pretty brisk northwest winds across Kodiak Island, the Barrens, Kachemak Bay. And that should dry it and clear it out and cool it off here over south central Alaska with the uh, snow showers tapering off. Uh, a lot of moisture here for the Panhandle tonight. Rain in the south, snow in the north, and that about sums it up there for the uh, outlook for Tuesday. We've got uh, a trough exiting, or passing through the southeast, southern part of the southeast coast, drying up to the north, a little cooler. With the, uh, this will be moving out overnight, Tuesday night, and this clearing will be following that in. Nice day tomorrow here, south central Alaska. The warm front pushing moisture to the uh, Alaska Range late in the afternoon, main push off to the northeast here. Could see some uh, blowing snow up there over the northwest interior where the uh, winds will be stronger. Otherwise, it'll be too warm here, or milder air, chance of rain or snow changing to rain over the southwest coast, extending back toward the uh, eastern Aleutians. And again, this front uh, really weakening as it comes eastward here with the low centers pulling back up into the Russian Far East, really losing its support. So the gales will be over and probably barely small craft advisory winds uh, with this down toward the Fox Islands tomorrow. Definitely, though, up along stronger winds for the southwest coast. And uh, still some snow up there over the upper Yukon Valley areas, but much better in the afternoon tomorrow for the Tanana Valley. And as I mentioned, uh, clear skies, or mostly clear skies. Uh, there'll be a few breaks, definitely lose the, any chance of uh, snow here for south central Alaska and the North Gulf Coast, sliding on over into the northern Panhandle. And the outlook for Wednesday, uh, that system comes in, a couple of troughs now, and uh, should be cold enough for uh, snow to fall right down to sea level here. Should be barely cold enough for some snow showers over south central Alaska right through here. Another trough back to the west for some light snow into northeast Bristol Bay and the Cuscombe Valley to the Alaska Range and then back to the northwest there toward Kotzebue Sound, the Solowick Noatak Valleys. Isolated snow showers there for Norton Sound. High pressure trying to build into the Yukon Delta, or Yukon Cuscombe Delta there. Maybe some clearing with that. Definitely drier, light winds and scattered rain and snow showers with the Alaska Peninsula. Dry, no wind. Light winds and could be mostly sunny day there for the southeast coast in the afternoon. A few more clouds out along the outer coastline. Weaker system brings some moisture into the uh, central and eastern Aleutians. Otherwise, the cold front stays back out to the west there, at least for the time being. Lows for tonight, uh, right around zero here over the eastern interior to a little below up over the eastern north slope and Arctic coast. Milder 20s to the southwest, 30s for the Aleutians. And the Panhandle, 35 to 40 for your lows tonight. And then for tomorrow highs, mid-30s south central Alaska, upper 30s and lower 40s for the Panhandle, a little below zero on the eastern Arctic coast. And then for the uh, lows for Tuesday morning, back a little colder there over the northeast interior, and the highs will be about the same. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into uh, aviation, we've got a lot of IFR here, especially in the western interior, up to the north slope, out to the Arctic coast. Pretty good band here from uh, Around the Eagle area, southwestward to the Alaska Range through the uh, Denali Park, also along the Cuscoa Mountains on up into the central interior, and marginal VFR extending south across the Perloffs down to the uh, Atka area on over to about Nikolsky, and VFR breaking out over Bristol Bay, VFR also breaking out over Kodiak Island, the Kenai Peninsula, and uh, south central Alaska kind of lingering there over the Talkeetna Mountains, but uh, VFR for Prince William Sound, southeast coast. Uh, IFR to marginal VFR with the lowest conditions over toward the eastern border. And for the uh, afternoon forecast, IFR holds here up over the Arctic coast areas. Uh, a little bit of improvement, that band lifting northward. So along and north of the Brooks Range there, or right in there will be a swath of VFR, followed by some more marginal stuff. 
Widespread IFR out here from the Seward Peninsula and the uh, Nolato Hills area across the Yukon Cusk from Delta. <clears throat> VFR holding over Bristol Bay and uh, good VFR now south and east of the Alaska Range, including the Copper River Basin, down into the northern panhandle. And then for Wednesday morning, widespread IFR continues here. Western interior pushing gradually eastward with that next front roaring on in, uh, spreading IFR to the Alaska Range, maybe a little east of there, late in the afternoon on Wednesday, northeastward. Still a swath of uh, VFR there on the lee side of the Brooks Range and then back to IFR for the Arctic Coast. VFR, Southeast Interior, Kenai Peninsula down across the, the Panhandle. And then for Wednesday afternoon, we've got uh, VFR holding here over Cook Inlet. So everything kind of hits the wall there, the Alaska Range, and slips on up over the top there. So VFR from the Alaska Range northward through the Tanana Valley, Yukon Flats area, marginal over to the border. Good VFR now for the afternoon. Uh, for the Panhandle and marginal VFR for the Aleutians with VFR here for the Northwest Bering Sea. Passes Anatovic, marginal becoming VFR tomorrow. Uh, same forecast for Adigan, marginal VFR to start with, trending towards VFR into the afternoon. And uh, let's see, there we go, getting the right side. Uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR improving in the afternoon with one system pulling off and the next one approaching. Uh, going back, uh, lowering conditions there tomorrow evening. Same thing for rainy, holding marginal VFR at times throughout the entire day. And for windy, same forecast, marginal VFR. And Isabel, marginal trending toward VFR. And uh, Mintasta, look for improvement. Lowest conditions in the morning, better in the afternoon, possibly becoming VFR. And for Tanita, marginal VFR to start, becoming VFR by at least early afternoon. And for Portage, good VFR. Chilkoot and White, IFR to start with, with a dramatic improvement through the day going VFR later on in the afternoon. And for the uh, freezing level at the surface here, uh, north of St. Matthew Island to Bristol Bay along the North Gulf Coast, two to 4,000 feet over the southern panhandle. Icing, uh, lots coming up to, into the uh, western interior here, spreading eastward slowly. This batch lifting out to the northeast, some more out over the far western Aleutians. And the bulk of the icing now actually south of the panhandle, but it'd be some uh, scattered light rime or mixed icing over the central and southern areas. Jet stream ridging, trying to rebound here through the central interior tomorrow. It's a little bit of an improvement trend, but a good westerly flow coming through that, as you can see, anywhere from 60 to 100 knots. And the next storm out here will eventually be pushing eastward. And at uh, 9,000 feet, uh, we've got good flow here. Westerlies out over the western and central Aleutians. Good southwest flow over the uh, Bering Sea turning southerly. And we've got what, 40 to 50 knots across much of the area, falling back to about 30 knots through the Bering Strait. And a band coming through the interior of about uh, 30 knots uh, turning westerly, again coming over the top of this ridge. Easterlies there along the Arctic coast up to 25 knots. And the Panhandle, nor good northwest winds there, 22, 30, possibly 35 knots. And a 3,000 feet lighter winds there down to 15 to 20 there for the uh, southeast coast, about 25 to 30 for the Gulf of Alaska, back toward Kodiak Island, and uh, 30 knot winds west-northwest from the central interior on over to the east there and along just north of the Alaska Range. Good southwest flow out here over the Bering Sea, anywhere from 30 to 50 knots, extending back into the Aleutians, westerlies 25 to 35 out in that area. As far as turbulence goes, a lot of moderate chop in the forecast tomorrow, considerable moderate here from the northwest coast, Cape Lisburn, all the way down western interior, Kodiak Island, up into south central Alaska, all of the Aleutians, and much of the Panhandle. Now, after the break, I'll be back with more interesting forecasts and information. Timeliness is extremely important in, in submitting your data. Uh, if it's late or you've saved it for the next report and putting two reports into the same time, then your synoptic value is, is totally lost. It's, the idea is to get your report in as close to the synoptic hour as possible. Weather data is normally transmitted to the National Weather Service four times daily, corresponding to most weather prediction model runs. These reports are submitted in Zulu time or Greenwich time or universal time coordinate, whichever term you want to use, but they're submitted at these synoptic hours every six hours all around the world the same time so that when Klaus Mueller is taking an observation in Germany on board his ship at 0600 Zulu, John Thompson in the Pacific is also taking it at 0600 Zulu, and those times are exactly the same. So no matter where you are in the world, the synoptic time will remain the same, and the data 
taking time is exactly the same for everyone. There are exceptions. Vessels operating within 200 miles of the U.S. or Canadian coasts or within 300 miles of a named tropical storm are urged to report every three hours. Sudden weather changes or unusual occurrences should be sent whenever conditions warrant. Observations taken by Voss program vessels consist of wind direction and speed, atmospheric pressure, air temperature and dew point, sea surface temperature, waves and swell, present and past weather, clouds, visibility, and sea ice. Your basic reporting tool is the ship's weather observations form. Recording weather observations for radio transmission utilizes the synoptic code, which was developed by the World Meteorological Organization. It is used on all weather reporting ships to allow rapid transmission and computer processing of data. The synoptic code, which is used for recording the standard shipboard meteorological observation, is used not only by the United States, but also internationally by all countries participating in the World Meteorological Organization. Now, the good thing about this is no matter what country you go to or what country uses these forms, whether it's Japan or Germany or the U.S., Canada, anywhere, the different columns are all the same. The parameters are all the same in the exact same columns no matter which format you use. This makes it able to be used by computers around the world for generating forecasts. Entering data into the coded format is made much easier by the ship's code card. This one is in English, but they are available in a variety of different languages all around the world. Here's how a typical set of observations would be recorded. In the appropriate columns of the observation form, in this case, the YY and GG columns, record the date and time, usually the nearest synoptic hour, in Zulu time. Use the code card instructions to properly format your entry. Next, in the I column, the form asks for your method for determining wind speed. The code card instructs you to enter a 3 if wind speed is estimated or a 4 if an anemometer is used. If an anemometer is used, you must make a correction for the vessel's motion. The procedure is the same across the form. For instance, latitude is entered in degrees and tenths. 99 is a code preceding the ship's latitude and longitude position group. The Q column is your ship's quadrant of the globe. It is also entered using the code numbers specified by the code card. Longitude follows. The ship's course and speed are very important elements in the marine weather report. The ship's true compass heading is recorded on the form, as well as the ship's speed made good over the last three hours. The most difficult observations are those that rely on personal judgment and the experience of the observer. These are wind direction and speed, present and past weather, type and height of clouds, visibility, waves and swell, and ice conditions. The National Weather Service provides an observer's handbook, which can be quite useful in observing and reporting these data. The Guide to Sea State, Wind and Clouds is a handy visual reference as well. You must report only the true wind, Weather forecasters need true wind speed, not the apparent wind speed measured by a moving ship's anemometer. Determination of true wind speed and direction is often difficult from a moving vessel. In this case, we're moving ahead at about 20 to 22 knots in this direction. The relative wind speed moving this way, as you can see by my hair and my shirt, blowing like this. Whereas in actuality, the true wind is coming from this direction and moving this way at about maybe eight to ten knots, as can be seen by the surface small breaking waves. The most common and reliable way of estimating true wind speed and direction is by observing the wind's effect on the sea surface. These effects have been organized into a comparative scale called the Beaufort scale, recorded in knots. Ranging from calm, with the sea like a mirror, all the way up to hurricane force winds, the Beaufort scale associates sea conditions such as breaking waves, boiling sea, foam and spume with wind speed. A practiced observer will note such features as white caps or the formation of larger waves. The appearance of streaks and spray are important indicators of wind speed. 
Of course, wind waves always move in the direction the wind is blowing, so they indicate true wind direction. Your guide to sea state, wind, and clouds provides illustrations and descriptions of waves to help you apply the Beaufort scale. It's an approximate system, but can be quite accurate for an experienced observer. Once again, code your entry for wind direction. Wind speed is recorded directly in knots. Forecasters need to know present and past weather conditions, including cloud development. This is your appraisal of the conditions as you observed them during the past six hours. For example, conditions such as snow, or fog, or squalls, or other phenomena such as lightning or funnel clouds are coded as numbers as specified by the code card. The handbook gives the details on how to report the various kinds of weather phenomena and their subcategories. Clouds are a good predictor of changing weather. Proficiency in cloud identification is a combination of practice and study. There's a gradual transition between the various types of clouds, which can make identification difficult. The most reliable observations of clouds are made by keeping as close and continuous a watch as possible on their development. The National Weather Service posters and guide can be a great help in this. Cloud heights will have to be estimated. Sometimes objects near the horizon can offer perspective. Estimate the height above the sea at the base of the lowest cloud seen. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Today's sea ice analysis uh, for Monday. A uh, fair amount of melting has taken place over the last uh, two or three days here. South of Nunavak Island, as you can see, on in toward Bristol Bay with those uh, milder southeast winds. And uh, it looks like uh, the pattern not conducive at all to any sea ice expansion here in the Bering Sea. In fact, uh, another storm coming up, we're going to go into some south and southwest winds. So ice will continue to, re to retreat to the north or just uh, meld out outright here, especially on into Bristol Bay for the next couple of days. Coastal water forecast here for the southeast coast tomorrow. Pretty brisk there on the south coast. Westerlies at 30 knots, 14 foot seas, west 20 for uh, Clarence Strait. Light northwesterlies for Stevens Passage, light northerlies for Lin Northern Lynn Canal, and uh, west northwest 25 for the north coast. Outlook for Wednesday, light and variable winds at about 15 knots for the north coast. Uh, northwest 20 down south there with seas 9 to 10 feet, and north 20 knots, Stevens Passage gusts 40 knots, north at 10 for Clarence Strait, and even uh, more wind up there for Northern Lynn Canal, outflow winds gusting to 40 knots from the north. And for uh, Cook Inlet, Northern Cook Inlet, light southwesterlies tomorrow, but uh, much stronger here south of the Forelands, west 30 knots, seven foot seas. Good gales here coming out of Kachemak Bay with that higher pressure building in over the southwest interior. West 40 knots there, northwest 45, almost storm force there for the Barren Islands. And uh, west to northwest, 30 knots for the North Gulf Coast. Gales here farther to the east. And Prince William Sound, northwest 30 knots, sea six feet. Those drop off to 10 knots when they're under the northeast, so big drop off in the winds there. Seas down to 2 feet. West, uh, 15 for the eastern Gulf Coast, and then back to the west here, southwest at 20. Pick up to 25. Small craft advisories for the Barren Islands. Kachemak Bay, northwest, coming down to 25 knots. And now northeast, 10 to 15 for Cook Inlet. And for Bristol Bay, tomorrow, south, 25 knots. Southwest, 30 knots here on the, on the uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. But... Uh, Full gales here on the north side, 40 knots with uh, seas building to 14 feet. And then from uh, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, westerlies at 25 knots. We've got westerly gales here for Kodiak Island, a higher gust in the morning. Uh, they're west 35 knots, Shelikoff Strait, uh, west 25. Outlook for Wednesday, southwest 25 there for Kodiak Island. Seas uh, running 9 feet in Shelikoff Strait to 7 feet there on the east side. Southwest 20. Turned southerly at 20 here for the Alaska Peninsula, but uh, 25 knots on the Bering Sea side with 9 foot sea. Southwest 20 for the uh, Bristol Bay zone and seas at 8 feet. Good gales coming into the uh, eastern Aleutians with that front uh, weakening, but uh, still looking at some pretty good gales with that south to southwest for up to 45 knots there in a, in a narrow band, narrowing band in advance of that frontal boundary. Seas uh, pretty good there, anywhere from uh, 19 to as high as 27 feet. 
25 feet, winds starting to come down behind the front there, 30 to 40 knots, and then back toward the main low circulation here, 35 knots southwesterlies out over the western Aleutians. And then they'll swing around to the east-southeast uh, and come down to 20 knots out toward Chimianatu and Kiska Island. Otherwise, east-southeast, 30 to 35 for the central Aleutians. Lighter winds in store for the Fox Islands down to as low as 20 to 30 knots. Even, and the 20 knot winds are on Alaska Island. Southwest coast, south winds 35, gales tomorrow there. 45 knots for the Perveloff Islands, 35 for St. Matthew Island, south 30 for St. Lawrence Island. And then on Wednesday, southwest 20 to 25 here for the coast, south 20 for St. Lawrence Island. Same thing for the Perveloffs, southwest 25 for St. Matthew Island. Those seas uh, about 17 feet up along the uh, area from Wales up to Cape uh, uh, Thompson. East, 30 knots, and then from Cape Thompson up the west side of the coast, east, 25 knots. The first wind advisories all through those areas. East to 20, pretty uniform for the central coast, eastward toward the Mackenzie River Bay. And then for the uh, Wednesday outlook, east 20 on that far eastern zone. First wind advisories here up to 30 knots on the central coast down to Cape Beaufort, and then a drop off and a swing around to the south there from Cape Beaufort down to Wales, 15 to 20 knots. And then for tonight, again, here's the next system rolling into the Bering Sea there. And again, uh, southern portion weakening here, but uh, holding together enough for at least some gales tomorrow as it gets into the eastern Aleutians. Big push of warm air, uh, possible blowing snow developing tonight there for St. Lawrence Island. And uh, snow diminishing now over south central Alaska, the flow turning around, high pressure building into the west. And that shifts up. Winter weather advisory ends at 9 p.m. for the Susitna Valley, continues for the Tanana Valley. <clears throat> rain and snow in the panhandle and uh, looks like that will continue as this front weakens more snow coming into the central interior on Wednesday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.